Hello and welcome to the Fat Boss Guy to Zekvoz on Mythic in Aldir. Now this encounter is actually very similar to Heroic Mode, so much that there isn't any new mechanics in play whatsoever in this fight. The main difficulty is getting over doing both Heroic Phase 1 and 2 simultaneously throughout the entire fight, and dealing with the pseudo enrage of the final phase mind controls. To start off, let's talk about composition. So the little lads on Mythic have a lot of health and they're still very important targets. You need to find a balance in your raid where you have enough damage to kill these guys extremely fast, yet still have significant boss damage. In the early weeks, we actually had a few of our Warlocks play demo on this fight, just to kill them that little bit faster. If you have the option to, definitely bring Frost Mages and Warriors, as they are particularly strong at getting these guys down fast. Just like Heroic, all forms of CC works on them, so having a DK tank mass grip them is incredibly useful, as well as having stuns and knockbacks available from things like Ring of Peace. Also to note, many guilds 5 heal this encounter. This is more of a safety thing more than anything else. If you have strong healers, we definitely recommend 3 or 4 healing the fight instead. With that out of the way, let's talk about phase 1. So the main difference is that every time the little lads spawn, you'll also have the 3 void weavers at the same time. We tank the boss not too far from where he spawns, right on top of one of the spawn locations of the void weavers. We kill this one first whilst cleaving onto all the little lads. The two void weavers behind are either trapped or sheeps. Do note that pretty much all CC works on them, so just use whatever you've got. We then move the boss onto the new void weaver, one by one, whenever the previous one dies. These guys are gaining a stacking damage dealt increase whilst they're alive, so eventually their void bolts are really gonna fucking hurt, so make sure you're interrupting them. Now, whilst you are dealing with them, you'll still get the Roiling Deceits throughout the fight. Continue to place them as far away from the raid as possible, because you really don't want to spawn one of those Yogg-Saron ads on Mythic. If you are stupid enough to spawn one of them by accident, do note that just as they die, if you use some sort of knockback or displacement ability, they will not explode whilst they're in midair for whatever reason. So yeah, if you make a mistake, just knock them back as they die. Now, as for the I-Beam, on Mythic, this is very fast. You do not really have a lot of time to move away from a stack group of players if you're targeted. The best strategy is to be pre-spread, or even just perma-spread the entire fight. And when you are targeted, you just stand still and others move away from you if they're too close. Now, the Surging Darkness has also been empowered. It naturally deals more damage, is slightly faster, has one more explosion set to dodge, and of course, the patterns are still pseudo-random. This makes it slightly more difficult to deal with, but in reality, it is pretty easy. Just note that you will get horrible overlaps during these surging darknesses with roiling deceits at the same time. We set up a pretty simple rule of debuff players to use the top of the safe space, whilst other players use the bottom. The I-beams can also overlap with this surging darkness. There isn't really a great strategy here, apart from just being spread out within the safe zones the best you can, making use of the entire space. If that means that you're not hitting the boss because you're a melee player, then that's what you have to do. Two people being hit by a beam won't kill anyone, but three definitely will. Just keep that in mind whilst you're spreading. Once you've got the hang of all of that and the boss is getting nearer to 40%, you'll be close to transitioning into the last phase. Before pushing, make sure you're not about to get a new set of adds. The last phase is all about nuking the boss before the entire raid is mind controlled, so having adds up is just going to slow you down significantly. Now in this final phase, you'll no longer have the adds, but everything else is still in play. It just comes in far less frequently. And it's at this point you'll now need to start soaking the orbs just like you did on Heroic. Now as a first kill in this phase can take such a long time because, well, the boss is on 40% health, you'll probably want healers to take the first few orbs, ideally resto shamans as they can just ank after they've been killed and really you should try and go into this last phase with as many battle reses as possible as the orb buff is about to run out and the mind control is about to hit the player we make sure we move near the boss that way melee can instantly swap and cleave them down after the first few healers have taken the orbs you can either do it randomly and just let any old dps take it or you can call single players to soak them it's kind of up to you as long as the orb doesn't hit the ground and is always bounced towards the raid and not away from the raid the boss should die before you do the only other thing really to mention is the first surging darkness in this phase as it will cross over with an eye beam Whilst progressing, we made a rule of saving all personal cooldowns for this point, as after this surging darkness, there's not really much that's going to kill you aside from the orb mind controls, so using everything including healing cooldowns just to survive this final difficult part of the fight is definitely a good idea. 
But that's all it is for this encounter. Don't die to stupid shit. Make sure you soak the orbs. Make sure you kill the mind control players. And don't spread the eye beam And you'll be perfectly fine. Thanks for watching, guys. If you want more detailed information on this encounter, including breakdowns of each surging darkness overlap, then do go check out our written guide over on Wowhead. You can find a link for that in the description below. Before we head off, a huge thanks to all of our supporters over on Patreon. You guys are awesome, and we really appreciate every single last one of you. So thank you so, so much. Take care, guys, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.